One of the first steps you want to do after making sure you have all the pieces that you need is to load the software. And the Excel DFI software is compatible with Windows operating systems 98 or better, uh, XP as well as also Vista. So go ahead and take your laptop or even your home computer because you can load it in that to, if nothing else, familiarize yourself with the whole process. Okay, once the disk is loaded, you'll need to, uh, this page right here will come up and you need to open folder to view files. Once the file is currently on CD, screen pops up. You'll need to go over to setup, double click on that, and follow the prompts. You'll see that the installer will come up. Uh, once that is installed, the prompts will come in after that. The uh, location in which this will be stored is typically on your C drive. Next. Next, again, all pretty much self-explanatory. Click Next. It'll install. You may or may not have to uh, restart your computer. And uh, away you go. Very easy software to install. Next, the software for the driver installation will come up, and that is to uh, make sure that your communication cable that's supplied with the kit is in fact able to communicate between your laptop computer or any computer for that matter and the Thruster Series EFI ECM. Once that setup is complete, you click Next and go through the same prompts as before. It'll inform you that it has been completed, and again, you may or may not have to restart your, your computer. It is recommended that you view all of the following software procedures in their entirety before attempting any adjustment to your application. Once the software has been installed, you'll want to go to the main page. Normally, with a key on, engine off, you would go online to the ECM. However, just for representation purposes here, we'll go to offline from file. And you can pick any of the, uh, of the current calibrations that are stored in here. Uh, we have, again, our application is at Chevrolet. So let's go with the 383 crate motor. And now you're able to view the dashboard. Now on your dashboard, this application right now is running, but you can boot up with a key on, engine off. Gone into control S's and SAM. This is to make sure that all your engine parameters are correct, your firing order is correct, your map setting is correct, you are set in sequential, your scaled map axis. Kits will typically come with the scaled map axis in the disabled position. To enable, click it down and press F10. For further information, select F1 for help. Your TPS has been set correctly and your ignition configuration is correct. Any change on there, you'll want to press F10 for a single item change, or if you've made multiple changes to this screen, send all to ECM, press and click, you see them highlight, then you can escape this, data transfer complete. And this is your control C as in Charlie. Your ignition cutoff, your rev limiter, your fuel cutoff, which typically on a modified engine you want it to go much higher so you don't run it out of fuel. Here's your fuel restore speed, your engine coolant temp threshold, in other words, ECT threshold. That means that your O2 sensor, your wideband O2, will not come on and start to correct until it reaches that particular temperature. It's enabled. As you can see here, your wideband O2 sensor type is configured here. Again, if, you have, if you're buying an engine builder's kit or a plug and play kit, this will already come set up for you, but it's nice to review it nonetheless. Exhaust feedback sensor, make a change, send all to ECM or F10 if you want to make one single change. One of the other preliminary steps in setting this system up once it's installed, your software is installed, and is to calibrate the TPS. You need to give a reference point to the ECM as to where the low set point is and the high set point is. Right now, the throttle blades are essentially closed. They're a little bit open, but essentially they're closed. The computer thinks they're closed, and that's all that matters. 
then what you'll do is you've now stored the low set point. You'll want to mash the throttle all the way to the floor. Make sure that your throttle blades open up all the way. And then store high set point. Now the computer knows what's idle and what's wide open. It's a reference point. Now you've set your, your TPS. Our another configuration table is control O. And what this is, is in fact your fan operation. What I've done in, in this application is the shift light, white wire coming out of the main harness, it has two functions. It can either be used as a shift light or as your number two fan control. So I have it on this particular application as our number two fan control. So you'll set your fan on temperature, your fan off temperature. Okay, and again, any single change that you make, you press F10. That change is then made into the ECM. When you have fan number two come on, do you want fan number one to go off? Yes or no? When you have your AC request come on, do you want to turn the fan on? In other words, if you have the AC harness attached to your application, when you turn your AC clutch on, your AC compressor, it'll automatically turn one of your fans on. That's what this question is asking you here. And again, no or yes. You highlight it, click it, and you'll press F10 to make that change in the ECM. You can escape out of that screen. You have one other configuration screen, F4, which is your air fuel ratio table. You want to start out with that. Again, depending on your application, if you have purchased a plug and play system, these will all be pretty much preset. If you are custom tuning it, a, uh, something a little bit more camshaft, that type of thing, sometimes you may not be able to run quite this lean at your what would typically be a cruise area which would be right in here you may have to run down around 14.0 14.2 uh, again depending on camshaft lift and duration overlap it would depend on how well it will accept a leaner mixture the ccm is a really good mathematician it takes into consideration your engine coolant temp intake air temp map sensor readings as well as other data and figures how long to pulse the injector to achieve the desired air fuel ratio This next one is your spark table. This is F3, as in, F as in Frank, three is a quick shortcut to it. And again, this is your ignition advance, your wide open throttle down here, and your cruise up here. A lot of times people will say, boy, I'd really like to have a nice, good cruise, but when I put my foot in it, I don't want it to ping and knock, and I want to still want to have the power. Well, with EFI, this gives you the ability to do that. Up in this area here, again, would be cruise, You'll run a lot of advanced timing, a lot of timing advance here in that area to give you a nice, efficient cruise. Once you put your foot in it, it reverts to that part of the map and it'll, it'll fuel and spark the timing accordingly. Last but not least, but probably again, one of the most important tables in this whole setup is your VE table. This is what we're looking at right here. As you know, an engine is basically an air pump. And what you're doing in this table is calculating the amount of air and consequently fuel moving through the engine. If you'll notice, these are all obviously numbers here. Don't get too hung up on the actual number itself. However, I do want to point out something. You can go to this table, go to a 3D graph, and see how your fuel enrichment is. Notice here is where you're actually supplying the most amount of fuel to the engine, not at your maximum RPM. Typically, the engine will require the most amount of fuel at wherever the peak torque occurs. Peak torque occurs where your engine is most efficiently breathing. So normally, as you'll see here in the bottom, it'll peak out here and drop off. I like to look at these numbers essentially as a main jet size. Obviously, you need less fuel down here in idle and that. You'll need less fuel here in cruise. But when you put your foot in it, there you go. You need more fuel. That's pretty much the, the uh, significance of the VE table. We'll get into actually calibrating this table once we have our application up and running. Now that we fired it up, this is your volumetric efficiency table.